Real quick, what's your last name? Sitch, S-Y-T-C-H. What's your first name? Samurai. Okay, what's your middle name? A WWE Hall of Famer will spend the next 17 years behind bars. There's a rarely acknowledged shadow in the dynamic realm of WWE, where vibrant personas collide beneath the spotlight. Beyond the thrilling matches and captivating characters lies a hidden reality, the tales of wrestlers grappling with legal woes. Guys, guys give us some like space, let's do our job. While the ring showcases heroic acts and intense battles, it mirrors human complexity, encompassing darker aspects. In this video, I will discuss a list of wrestlers in jail, despite the flashy facades and high-octane shows they entertained us over the years. Harrison Hardbody Norrison in the world of professional wrestling, some rise to stardom and capture the hearts of fans around the globe, but there are also those whose careers take a dark and twisted turn, leading them down a path of destruction. His opponent was last year's runner-up in the heavyweight championship. He is the mouth from the south. 35 years old, 190 pounder from Kennesaw, Georgia. It is hard body. One such wrestler is Hardbody Harrison, whose real name is Harrison Norris Jr. Known for his impressive physique and peculiar ring attire, Hardbody Harrison never managed to break through to the top of the wrestling world. He was often relegated to the preliminary level, losing to more established stars on WCW Monday Nitro. However, his journey to the wrestling ring was far from ordinary. Before stepping into the squared circle, Harrison had a different kind of battle to fight. He served in the United States Army overseas during Operation Desert Storm, experiencing the harsh realities of war firsthand. After his military service, he found solace and purpose in professional wrestling. Harrison's wrestling career began when he trained at the prestigious UCW Power Plant, a renowned training facility for aspiring wrestlers. With his military background and dedication to physical fitness, he quickly caught the attention of WCW officials. In 1995, he made his debut with World Championship Wrestling, hoping to make a name for himself in the industry. However, Harrison's time in WCW was short-lived. In 2001, the the company was purchased by Vince McMahon and the WWF, leading to significant changes in the wrestling landscape. Unfortunately, Harrison's contract was not picked up, and he found himself without a place in the wrestling world. This marked the end of his professional wrestling career, but little did anyone know that his story was far from over. Upon leaving the ring, Harrison became entangled in a legal battle that would further tarnish his reputation. He was a party to a multi-plaintiff lawsuit filed by Sonny Onu on behalf of WCW talents against their former employer, AOL Time. Warner. The lawsuit alleged racial discrimination within the company, and Harrison, along with other performers, sought justice for what they believed was mistreatment. The lawsuit would eventually be settled out of court, with all the performers, including Harrison, reportedly receiving a substantial financial settlement. It seemed like a new chapter was about to begin for Harrison, but little did anyone know that his life was about to take a dark and disturbing turn. Following his departure from WCW, Harrison found himself competing in the FX series, Toughman. This show showcased the toughness and fighting skills of everyday individuals, and Harrison managed to capture the show's heavyweight championship in 2000. It seemed like a glimmer of hope for his career, but it was merely a fleeting moment of success. Somewhere along the way, something went terribly wrong for the former wrestler, bodybuilder, and fighter. The dark secrets that had been lurking beneath the surface were about to be exposed, sending shockwaves through the wrestling community and beyond. The shocking revelations of his involvement in a prostitution ring and the abuse of power that ensued painted a disturbing picture of a man who used his position to exploit vulnerable women. The testimonies and evidence presented during his trial left no doubt about his guilt, resulting in a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Hardbody Harrison's story serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder that the wrestling industry, like any other, can attract individuals with dark intentions. It is important to remember that the actions of a few should not tarnish the reputation of the entire wrestling community, as countless wrestlers have used their platform for good and continue to inspire others. Eugene Mark Zumhoff. Meet Eugene, whose real name is Nick Dinsmore, a beloved character known for his childlike innocence and special needs persona. In a shocking turn of events, Eugene's life took a dark and unexpected twist when he found himself on the wrong side of the law. In 2014, he was arrested for possession of illegal substances, including cocaine and marijuana. Shockwaves through the wrestling community as fans struggled to reconcile the wholesome image of Eugene with the reality of his crimes. During the court proceedings, it was revealed that Eugene had been involved in drug trafficking for several years 
years, using his celebrity status to transport drugs across state lines. The prosecution presented a strong case, highlighting the severity of his crimes and the impact they had on society. After a lengthy trial, Eugene was found guilty on multiple charges, including drug trafficking, possession, and conspiracy. The judge, recognizing the seriousness of his crimes, handed down a harsh sentence. Eugene was sentenced to 25 years in prison without the possibility of parole. The arrest and conviction of Eugene, once a beloved character in the WWE, profoundly impacted his career and legacy within the wrestling industry. Fans were left stunned and disheartened by the revelation of his involvement in drug trafficking and possession. Eugene's wholesome image, which had endeared him to millions of fans, was shattered overnight. The wrestling community struggled to reconcile the character they had grown to love with the reality of his criminal activities. The trust and admiration that fans had placed in Eugene were replaced with disappointment and betrayal. The WWE, known for its commitment to maintaining a positive public image, swiftly distanced itself from Eugene. His merchandise was pulled from shelves, and his character was written out of storylines. The company made it clear that it would not tolerate such behavior, and that it stood firmly against illegal activities. Eugene's arrest not only affected his career, but also had a ripple effect on those around him. The wrestling industry, always under scrutiny, faced backlash and criticism for allowing such actions to occur within its ranks. The incident served as a wake-up call for the industry to reevaluate its vetting processes and ensure that wrestlers were held to a higher standard. For Eugene, the consequences of his actions extended far beyond the wrestling ring. His reputation was tarnished, and his once promising career came to a screeching halt. The legacy he had built as a beloved character was forever overshadowed by the dark cloud of his criminal activities. Tammy Sonny Sitch once a vibrant and beloved figure in the wrestling community, Sonny's life took a dark turn that ultimately led to her imprisonment. Sonny's rise to fame was nothing short of meteoric. In the 1990s, she captivated audiences with her charismatic personality and stunning looks. Her presence in the ring and on the microphone made her an instant fan favorite. Sonny became the first ever WWE diva, paving the way for future generations of female wrestlers. However, behind the scenes, Sonny's personal life was spiraling out of control. As her fame grew, so did her her struggles with mental health and addiction. Hereditary and self-medicating alcoholism became a constant battle for Sonny, leading to a series of unfortunate events that would ultimately seal her fate. It was in March of 2022 when tragedy struck. Sonny, driving under the influence, crashed into a car that was stopped at a red light in Ormond Beach. The collision claimed the life of a 75-year-old man, Julian Fran Leader, who was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. A precious life was lost that tragic day. And it is so incredibly sorry for that. I would ask that you give me the opportunity to atone for what I've done. Police reports revealed that Sonny's blood alcohol content was four times the legal limit a shocking revelation that left the wrestling community and fans in disbelief. This was not Sonny's first brush with the law. In fact, it was her fourth DUI in just 10 years. Despite previous warnings and consequences, she continued to make reckless choices, putting herself and others in danger. To make matters worse, she was driving on a suspended license at the time of the fatal crash. The court trial that followed was a harrowing experience for all involved. Sonny's defense team dove into her troubled past, painting a picture of a damaged individual struggling with psychological and emotional issues. They argued that her life had been marred by mental health problems, exacerbated by her fame in the wrestling world and tumultuous relationships. Prosecutors, on the other hand, presented a compelling case against Sonny. They highlighted her reckless behavior and disregard for the law, emphasizing the devastating consequences of her actions. The courtroom was filled with tension as the victim's family expressed their grief and the irreparable loss they had suffered. In the end, the judge handed down a sentence that would forever change Sonny's life. She was sentenced to 17 and a half years in prison followed by eight years of probation. As the gavel fell, the wrestling world was in shock, grappling with the reality that one of their beloved stars would spend the next decade and a half behind bars. Patrick Velveteen Dream Clark, a rising star in the WWE, captured the attention of fans with his unique persona and captivating in-ring performances as Velveteen Dream. But behind the flamboyant character, a darker side was lurking. In November 2021, Clark's world came crashing down when he was arrested on multiple charges. The list of offenses was extensive and painted a troubling picture of his involvement with illegal substances and attempts to conceal evidence. The charges included possession of cocaine, use or possession of drug paraphernalia, 
paraphernalia, destroying slash altering slash concealing physical evidence, and even having no lamps or illuminating devices in his vehicle. It was a shocking revelation that left fans and fellow wrestlers stunned. The arrest sent shockwaves through the wrestling community, tarnishing the reputation of a once promising talent. But that was just the beginning of Clark's legal troubles. On April 21st, 2022, Clark faced the consequences of his actions when he was sentenced to a 12-month probation period for the November arrest. This probation was meant to hold him accountable and provide rehabilitation opportunities. The probation period was critical for Clark to reflect on his choices and make positive changes in his life. It was a chance for him to prove that he could overcome his past mistakes and rebuild his career. However, just four months into his probation sentence, Clark again found himself in trouble with the law. This time, the charges were even more shocking and disturbing. On August 20th, 2022, Clark was arrested for trespassing on the property after a warning and first-degree battery. The details of this arrest were truly alarming. According to police documents revealed by TMZ, Clark allegedly bit, punched, and even threatened to kill a gym employee at Club Orlando when asked to leave. These violent actions painted a troubling picture of Clark's behavior and raised serious concerns about his future in the wrestling industry. It was a shocking turn of events that left fans and fellow wrestlers questioning who the real Patrick Clark was behind the larger-than-life character of Velveteen Dream. The consequences of Clark's actions during his probation period would significantly impact his future. The wrestling community was left wondering if he could ever redeem himself and regain the trust of fans and colleagues. Teddy Hart as we continue to dive into the world of WWE wrestlers currently rotting in jail, we cannot ignore the shocking case of Teddy Hart. Born and raised in Calgary, Teddy Hart, whose real name is Edward Ellsworth Annis, comes from a wrestling dynasty. The grandson of pro wrestling legend Stu Hart, Teddy Hart has made a name for himself in the wrestling industry. However, his career has been marred by a series of legal troubles that have landed him in hot water. The story begins in July 2023, when Teddy Hart was pulled over by the police in Titusville, Florida. The reason for the traffic stop was speeding and failing to obey a red light. Little did Teddy Hart know that this routine traffic stop would lead to a series of shocking discoveries and ultimately his arrest. Upon approaching the vehicle, the officer immediately noticed a strong smell of burned cannabis emanating from inside. This raised suspicions and prompted a thorough search of the car. What the officer found was truly astonishing. An unsealed medical marijuana container was discovered, along with a female passenger in the car. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. In a fanny pack, the officer stumbled upon a zip lock bag containing a mysterious blue powder. To make matters even more alarming, Teddy Hart's Canadian and U.S. passports were also found in the fanny pack. The officer wasted no time conducting field tests on the blue powder, and the results were shocking. The powder tested positive for MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy. This revelation sent shockwaves through the wrestling community and left fans and fellow wrestlers in disbelief. But the surprises didn't end there. The officer also discovered red pills and powder stored in an eyeglasses case, which also tested positive for MDMA. The evidence was piling up against Teddy Hart, and it seemed like his legal troubles were far from over. When questioned about the drugs, Teddy Hart initially claimed that the powder and pills were a proprietary blend of MDMA-C and admitted that the bag was his. However, his story quickly changed when the officer found two vials of pills in the fanny pack. In a desperate attempt to defend himself, Teddy Hart exclaimed, I have a prescription for those. These conflicting statements only added to the complexity of the case and raised questions about the legitimacy of his claims. The charges Teddy Hart faces are serious. Possession of a controlled substance without a prescription and possession of MDMA are both third-degree felonies in Florida. Teddy Hart could face severe consequences, including imprisonment and hefty fines if convicted. The wrestling world, once filled with admiration for his talent, now watches as Teddy Hart's legal battles unfold. This arrest is not the first time Teddy Hart has found himself on the wrong side of the law. In 2020, he evaded arrest in Texas, adding to his troubled history. It seems that Teddy Hart's personal demons have caught up with him, and he now faces the harsh reality of the legal system. Wayne Ken Wayne in the world of professional wrestling, many larger-than-life characters have captivated audiences with their incredible athleticism and charismatic personalities. But behind the glitz and glamour of the wrestling ring, there lies a dark side that often goes unnoticed. One such shocking story is that of Nightmare Ken Wayne, a former professional wrestler who has now become a nightmare in reality. Kenneth Dwayne Peel, better known by his ring name, Nightmare Ken Wayne, was once a rising star in the wrestling industry. With his imposing physique and captivating persona, he quickly gained a loyal fan base 
face and achieve great success in the ring. However, his journey to stardom took a sinister turn, ultimately leading to his downfall. In September 2014, Nightmare Ken Wayne's world came crashing down when he was arrested by the Attorney General's Crimes Against Children Task Force. Investigators from the Attorney General's Cybercrime Unit and the DeSoto County Sheriff's Department discovered numerous images and videos of child pornography in his possession. The evidence was overwhelming, leaving no doubt about his involvement in this heinous crime. The arrest spread like wildfire through the wrestling community and left fans in disbelief. How could someone once idolized by so many stoop to such despicable acts? As the details of Nightmare Ken Wayne's case emerged, it became clear that he had been living a double life, hiding his dark secrets behind the mask of a wrestling superstar. In the courtroom, Nightmare Ken Wayne faced the consequences of his actions. Attorney General Jim Hood announced that Peel would be sentenced to 20 years for child exploitation. However, the sentence was not without its nuances. Peel would serve five years in prison and spend an additional 15 years in post-release supervision, ensuring he would be closely monitored even after his release. But the punishment didn't end there. Nightmare Ken Wayne was also ordered to pay $1,000 to the Mississippi Children's Trust Fund and $1,000 to the Mississippi Crime Victims Compensation Fund. These financial penalties were meant to provide some restitution to the victims and support the organizations dedicated to protecting children from exploitation. As the gavel fell, Nightmare Ken Wayne's life as he knew it was over. He would forever be marked as a sex offender, his name tarnished, and his reputation shattered. The wrestling world, once his playground, had turned its back on him, and he was left to face the consequences of his actions alone. Devin Hannibal Nicholson it was a shocking revelation that sent shockwaves through the wrestling community. Devin Hannibal Nicholson, an independent wrestler and YouTube interviewer, found himself amid a legal storm. According to PW Insider, Nicholson was arrested on charges of assaulting a woman and is set to stand trial on October 12th in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. The incident occurred a month earlier, from August 8th to August 29th, as indicated by Nicholson's YouTube account, which showed him in Kingston with his girlfriend. While it is presumed that the woman involved was his girlfriend at the time, the exact nature of their relationship has not been confirmed. Following his arrest, Nicholson was incarcerated and recently appeared before the Ontario Courts of Justice for a bail hearing. The hearing took place at 9 a.m., and the outcome of the hearing resulted in his release under the supervision of his parents. As part of his release conditions, Nicholson must stay with his parents or maintain daily contact with them. Furthermore, he is prohibited from having any contact with the victim. The fact that Nicholson, who is nearly 40 years old, has been released under the supervision of his parents has raised eyebrows. Some have drawn comparisons to fellow wrestler Colt Cabana, who famously had a joint bank account with his parents. However, it is important to approach these comparisons with caution, as they may be seen as a low blow. While not much is known about Nicholson personally, some individuals who have interacted with him in the past have described him as a good guy. However, the recent arrest for domestic violence has cast a shadow over his reputation. It is worth mentioning that this is not the first time Nicholson has found himself in legal trouble. Approximately a year ago, he was involved in an altercation with a referee, resulting in assault charges. The wrestling community has been divided in their opinions on Nicholson's arrest. Some believe that there may be more truth to the allegations than meets the eye, as domestic violence arrests often carry weight. Others are hesitant to pass judgment without knowing the full details of the situation. It is important to remember that court proceedings will ultimately determine his guilt or innocence. Before this incident, Nicholson gained attention for his legal battle against wrestling legend Abdullah the Butcher. Nicholson had contracted hepatitis C from Abdullah during a match, which led to a multi-million dollar settlement. However, according to Abdullah, he did not have the financial means to pay Nicholson any compensation. Lawsuits in the wrestling industry can be complex, and winning a case does not always guarantee financial restitution. Nevertheless, these legal battles make wrestling unique, as they unite a diverse array of personalities and individuals. In the case of Devin Hannibal Nicholson, it is important to remember the principle of innocent until proven guilty. While the details surrounding his arrest are concerning, allowing the court proceedings to unfold and determining the truth is crucial. It is possible that this incident may be a result of a misunderstanding, but only time will tell. The incident involving the referee in Texas, which occurred late last year, remains unexplained. If the reports are accurate, it was a blatant act of assault. The exact cause of the altercation is unknown, although there have been rumors of alcohol being involved. It is not uncommon for any occupation to have individuals with odd behavior, and it is hoped that Hannibal is not one of them. However, given the recent events, it is difficult to say for certain. Brett DiBiase 
Dale Brett DiBiase, a name once synonymous with wrestling greatness, now finds himself at the center of Mississippi's largest welfare embezzlement scandal. This scandal, considered the biggest in the state's history, has tarnished DiBiase's reputation and left a stain on the wrestling industry as a whole. Born into a wrestling dynasty, with his father being the legendary Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, Brett seemed destined for success in the squared circle. He had the looks, the charisma, and the talent to become a true wrestling superstar. But little did anyone know that a sinister plot was unfolding behind the scenes. It all started with allegations of a vast embezzlement scheme that siphoned millions of dollars from the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families TANF program. And at the center of it all was Brett DiBiase. According to court documents, DiBiase is alleged to have falsely claimed payments totaling $48,000 through his company, Restore2 LLC. But that's not all. He's also accused of falsifying invoices and other uh, documents to cover up the fraud. Instead of teaching classes about drug abuse, as he was supposed to, investigators discovered that he was living a life of luxury at a rehab facility in California. While low-income residents were meant to receive counseling and treatment for substance abuse, DiBiase was enjoying the comforts of a luxury rehab facility, far away from the responsibilities he had promised to fulfill. The investigation into this scandal revealed a web of deceit and manipulation that shocked the entire state. The fraudsters created false invoices to pay DiBiase for services he never provided, all under the guise of a wellness program for those in need. It wasn't until a brave whistleblower came forward, alerting authorities to the suspicious transactions, that the scheme began to unravel. This revelation prompted a sweeping investigation that led to multiple arrests and convictions, exposing the true extent of the embezzlement scandal. As the evidence mounted against him, Brett DiBiase found himself facing the consequences of his actions. In addition to his sentence in state court, he now faces up to five years in federal prison and a hefty fine of $250,000. The downfall of a once promising wrestling star serves as a stark reminder that fame and fortune can sometimes lead individuals down a treacherous path. This scandal's impact has affected Dubiasi's personal life and left a lasting mark on the wrestling community. Brian D.T. Porter McGee Brett Johnson, known by his ring name, The Enforcer, captivated audiences with his incredible athleticism and larger-than-life persona. He had it all, the looks, the charisma, and the talent. But behind the glitz and glamour of the wrestling world, a sinister side lurked. It was a fateful night when Brett's life took a horrifying twist. After posting a bloody picture to Facebook, he became the prime suspect in a brutal murder case. The image sent shockwaves through the wrestling community and beyond, leaving fans and friends in disbelief. The picture, a chilling sight of Brett covered in blood with a menacing grin on his face was a haunting prelude to the events that would unfold. Concerned friends and fans immediately contacted the authorities, fearing the worst. Law enforcement wasted no time in launching a full-scale investigation. They traced the location of the post and discovered Brett in a small town in the Midwest. But when the police arrived, Brett was nowhere to be found. What followed was a harrowing high-speed chase that spanned several counties. Brett, determined to evade capture, drove recklessly, putting innocent lives at risk. It was a desperate attempt to escape the consequences of his actions. Eventually, the police were able to apprehend Brett, bringing an end to the dangerous pursuit. But the shocking revelations were far from over. As the investigation unfolded, the true extent of Brett's crimes came to light. It was revealed that Brett's girlfriend, Sarah Thompson, had been brutally stabbed to death. The motive behind the heinous crime remains unclear, but the evidence against Brett was overwhelming. Forensic analysis linked Brett's DNA to the murder weapon, and witnesses came forward to testify that they had seen him arguing with Sarah on the night of her death. The prosecution built a strong case, leaving leaving no room for doubt. The trial that followed was a media frenzy, with the wrestling world and the public watching closely. After weeks of intense proceedings, the jury delivered their verdict, guilty on all counts. The judge, appalled by the brutality of the crime, handed down a severe sentence. Brett Johnson, once a promising wrestling star, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The wrestling world was left in shock and disbelief. The fall from grace of Brett Johnson serves as a stark reminder that even those we admire and idolize can have a dark side. It is a cautionary tale highlighting the importance of separating the persona from the person and reminding us that justice will always prevail. Cain Velasquez in the fast-paced world of professional fighting, where adrenaline and intensity reign supreme, it's not uncommon for emotions to run high. But earlier this year, the MMA community was left in shock when former UFC heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez found himself at the center of a scandal that would forever change the course of his life. It all began with an incident that struck at the very core of Velasquez's being, the alleged sexual assault of his son. As a father, the news hit him like a freight train, igniting a fire that would lead to a series of events that no one could have predicted. In 
Enraged by the injustice of it all, Velasquez's anger boiled over when he discovered that the man accused of assaulting his son was allowed to leave jail and be confined to house arrest until his subsequent hearings. The frustration and sense of powerlessness consumed him, pushing him to take matters into his own hands. In a moment of sheer desperation, Velasquez made a decision that would have far-reaching consequences. Attempted murder, one of many charges he would face, became the dark cloud that hung over his head. The world watched in disbelief as the once revered champion found himself on the wrong side of the law. For 253 agonizing days, Velasquez experienced life behind bars, separated from his loved ones and the world he once knew. The weight of his actions and the gravity of the charges against him were inescapable. But as the days turned into months, a glimmer of hope emerged. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Velasquez was granted release from jail. However, it came with a catch, electronic device supervision. This meant that while he was no longer confined to a cell, his every move would be monitored, ensuring that he remained within the boundaries of the law. The impact of Velasquez's arrest and subsequent legal battle reverberated throughout the MMA world. Fans and fellow fighters were left grappling with their emotions, torn between their admiration for the once undefeated champion and the shocking reality of his actions. As the story unfolded, the lines between right and wrong blurred, leaving everyone questioning their moral compass. How could someone who had dedicated their life to discipline and honor find themselves entangled in such a dark web of violence? But amidst the confusion and controversy, one thing remained clear. The sport of MMA would never be the same. Velasquez's fall from grace was a stark reminder that even the most revered heroes are not immune to the temptations and pitfalls of the human experience. If you enjoyed watching this video, check out our other awesome videos on the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.